look at this. Diamondback rattlesnakes. Beautiful monocled cobra. Chandler, check this. This is a Dahar Death Adder. So this is the world's fastest striking snake. You're not gonna eat my finger, are you? Ah! Oh, don't mind me. I'm just walking my two camels. Woo! We have Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. Hop up. Woo! Beautiful rattlesnakes. Look at this. We got three beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. These guys are the largest types of rattlesnakes on the planet. I've got my boy and girl right here that I've had for a while. And I've got this new rattlesnake that I actually got as a gift from Stone. And uh, it's a beautiful addition to the facility. In Florida, we have around six venomous snakes. Four in South Florida, your pygmy rattlesnake, water moccasin, coral snake, and of course the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake like this right here. These guys can actually get upwards to eight plus feet long, making this species the biggest rattlesnake in the world. And this snake right here, this snake right here is roughly about five foot or so. Let me get my other rattlesnakes on the move actually. All right, easy, easy, easy. Got my trusty snake hook. Put these guys right back into place. There we go. And I'm just taking them out to get some sunshine. Since these are a local species, I'm actually legally allowed to bring them out into the property and let them get some sunshine. What's up, big boy? This is actually a big female. So now I have a breeding trio of Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. And this being the largest venomous snake in North America, these guys actually have the largest venom yield of any venomous reptile in America. So this guy can deliver enough venom to kill a full grown man. They have a very necrotic venom. And a lot of people wonder, what do you do for a snake bite? Some people got confused when they saw me twisting my finger when I got bit by that cobra. And the reason that I did that is because a cobra is a highly neurotoxic snake being a front fixed thing to lap in. Whereas these guys, they're highly necrotic with their venom. They have hemotoxins, they have cytotoxins, it eats your flesh, your blood cells, rots you from the inside out. So if you got bit by a rattlesnake, you're not gonna want a tourniquet. If you tourniquet, the limb that's past that tourniquet will actually rot and you'll lose that limb, probably have to amputate it. Whereas the cobra, I didn't want my body to get shut down and then go into paralysis and die because your diaphragm will shut down, you can't breathe. Some rattlesnakes have neurotoxic venom, like your South American rattler, but a snake like this would be highly cytotoxic and uh, hemotoxic, eating your blood cells. So that's the hemo part, hemo meaning the blood. And these guys are no joke. One bite, whoo, one bite and you're in the hospital with your, your body being amputated and cut open. Uh, old school way of treating the bites is actually to do a fleshionomy, cutting your wrists, cutting your forearm, making these giant nasty scars to relieve pressure, but that's actually old school. You don't have to do that. If you allow the body to heal on its own, it will naturally go down with the swelling over time. Ooh, my rattlesnake's on the move, give me a second. Come here. Woo! Big, beautiful, Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. I love these guys. Obviously, if you see a rattlesnake like this, call a professional. Never try to kill the snake. Never try to handle it on your own. If you do that, you're going to end up getting bit and possibly killed or uh, lose a body part, if anything. Such beautiful snakes. They're on the move, actually. I'm just tailing them, getting them. Woo! Back over here. Beautiful. Now I have a breeding trio of Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. Even though sometimes people think what I do is not that smart, I've been doing this my whole life. I dedicate my life. So crocodilian education, reptile education, working with these beautiful animals from all around the world. I know I said I wouldn't be free handling too much, but it's kind of hard for me not to. I've been doing this my whole life. I can't stop working with these animals. It's my passion, it's my love. If you come closer, you can actually see that this beautiful big rattlesnake right here, that was a gift from my buddy Stone, has giant heat seeking pits right on the front of the face. You can see this guy can actually see a thermal image. So you can see a warm blooded mammal walking throughout the night when he's hunting or a big uh, potential predator like myself, which is making this rattlesnake feel very alarmed. And obviously I don't want to scare the rattlesnake. I just want to show this beautiful big rattler off to you guys. This is a female that Stone gave me. And now I have a breeding trio of Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. And soon we'll have a moccasin, we'll have potentially a coral snake. And we already have the pygmy rattlesnake. So we have the four venomous snakes of South Florida even though there's six total, counting the cane break from North Florida, as well as the copperhead from North Florida as well. Look how beautiful this rattlesnake is. 
I love rattlesnakes. They're an incredible animal with the capability to just rot flesh, but it's not for people. The last thing they want to do is waste their venom on us. They want to use that venom to break down their prey, kill it, eat it, and move on with their life. When a snake is cornered by a person and it feels threatened, it might rattle, let you know to back off. And in the last instance, they might strike out and bite. Sometimes they'll do a dry bite because they don't even want to waste the venom. It takes energy to produce that venom. That venom is a modified saliva. It's a protein that their body has to build, produce. And every time they waste that venom, and it's not on a prey item, it's a missed opportunity for future food. So they don't want to waste their venom on us. People think that these rattlesnakes are out to get you, but the reality of it is they live in habitat that gets developed by people all the time. And sadly, they're just trying to survive like the rest of us. We like to use that high dry ground to make our houses where the gopher tortoises live, where the rattlers live, where bears like to live. And then all these animals end up in our neighborhoods and people think that, ah, oh, I got a rattlesnake on my porch, I gotta kill it. The truth is these animals are essential for the ecosystem. We need our rattlers, we need our bears, we need our panthers, gators, crocs. And that's why we have to accept the fact that we moved into their territory and you gotta have the respect for them and learn not to kill them and call professionals out to relocate them. I'm hoping here in my area, I can help relocate snakes more and more and uh, continue that instead of having the locals just kill these snakes because that's a common occurrence where somebody will just see a rattlesnake like this and not think it's beautiful, but think it's something that should be hit with, with a shovel or shot with a gun. How beautiful is this? I got three rattlesnakes now, three beautiful Eastern Dimeback rattlesnakes. Come here, what are you doing? Gotta watch this other one. Don't want this guy going into an ant pile. Woo! You gotta love rattlesnakes. How cool is that? Three gorgeous Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes. I'm gonna put these guys back in the can. It's pretty cool that here in Florida, we're allowed to take our native species out, uh, but we're not allowed to take our exotic snakes out, which makes good reason. You wouldn't wanna bring a king cobra outside and potentially lose it in the woods. That wouldn't be too good. Uh, so we're allowed to bring out native species like the Eastern Diamondbacks, pygmy rattlers, moccasins. It just makes sense. So I'm gonna get these guys into a box. We're gonna put them in the snake house. Let's go see how all the animals are doing. Woo! Woo! Beautiful rattlesnakes. Uh -uh. Oh. There we go. There we go. Let's go put him back. By the way, guys, I wanted to give you a little update on the baby eyelash viper. He's doing good. He's getting big, looking beautiful. And I wanted to show you a comparison to mama. Look at this. We got mama right here. Look how big and beautiful mom is. She's like a foot and a half, maybe two feet long. And you can see how this little baby is a perfect duplicate of mama. I had 15 golden eyelash vipers produced here by this gorgeous female when I was recovering from the cobra bite. And this is the one little baby that I decided to keep. And I freaking love this golden eyelash viper. This is one of the most iconic venomous snake species on the planet. In my opinion, one of the coolest. Next to king cobras, rattlesnakes, gaboon vipers, eyelash vipers take the cake for some of the coolest reptiles out there. Called eyelash vipers because they have these crazy raised scales right above the eyelashes. They have these crazy raised scales right there above the eyes. And that's how they got the name Eyelash Viper. And they think that those scales, <laughs> hey mama, how you doing mama? Now they have no maternal instincts, but it's pretty cool to show a size comparison of the two. And uh, they have those eyelashes, they believe to keep debris out of the eyes and to help direct water into the corner of the eyes. So how cool is that? Mama and their little baby hanging out, seeing each other for the first time in weeks. And this little baby's eating little gnolls. In the wild, these guys are eating a gnolls and froglets. So when they're babies in captivity, it's just easier to give them what they'd be getting out in the wild. And what's really cool about this species is that they're polymorphic. They come in an endless array of colors. So even though that the mama's yellow and this little baby's yellow, when they produce babies in the future, they could have babies that are green, red, orange. So we're gonna get a different bloodline for this baby when she gets bigger. And we're gonna try and produce all these different types of eyelash vipers because they're one of my favorite species on the planet. And I think they're just gorgeous. Look how amazing these two snakes are. And mama's huge, look how big mama is. Let me put this little baby down for a second. Put this little baby down on my boot right there. 
And you guys can see how big mama is. Look at that. Next to my hand, mama's pretty big. And you can see this baby is almost just about the same size as mama's head. How cool is that? Beautiful vipers with heat seeking pits. You can see right there, those big holes and they can detect a thermal image moving throughout the tree line or the bushes when they're hunting. So these guys will eat mice, frogs, things like birds, small birds like hummingbirds, and they have these hinge fangs and hemotoxic venom, just like a rattler being in the Vipiridae family. Such a badass reptile. Ooh, we got the little monocled cobra right here that I decided to keep. This is one of Big Bertha's babies. I gave a few away to friends and then rehomed the rest to some other guys who have venomous reptile permits. This guy's got an awesome hood. Ooh, look at that. This cobra has an awesome hood on it. You can see it's got this crazy O that honestly goes out to the side and like winds up. And it's such a beautifully performing snake. I love it when a cobra acts like a cobra. And this cobra is very cantankerous. Woo, a little bit, uh, little bit defensive. We're just gonna put him right here. All I wanted to do, hello, hello. All I wanted to do is just get him some fresh water and get the dirty aspen out. What's up, dude? Oh, beautiful monocled cobra. Naya Kuthia. This guy is drop for drop more venomous than the King Cobra. And these snakes get about six feet long. Can I touch you on the tail? Can I touch you on the tail? Wait, I'm so sorry. Please stay. Woo! All right, I got you a little clean cup for water. We're gonna get you taken care of, buddy. So with a neurotoxic snake like this, you would definitely want to do a tourniquet to keep that neurotoxic venom from traveling. Because uh, depending on your situation, if you can't get to a respirator on time, when that venom shuts down your diaphragm, then uh, you're gonna wanna keep that neurotoxin from traveling. You want to you do it, you wanna use a tourniquet. So in my situation where I was bit in a rice field, I had no choice but to tourniquet to keep the neurotoxins from traveling because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get a respirator in time. And the last thing I need is to go into respiratory failure and have no oxygen going to my brain, which means I could go into a clinical death. So no oxygen in the brain, your brain starts to die. And after about five, six minutes, you're not gonna come back from it. So I had to think very fast when I was bitten by that snake. My experience, my background is what saved my life. Quick thinking. I was supposed to be a firefighter. So situational awareness and being ready for any situation uh, is what saved my life. And always being around venomous reptiles, crocodiles, is what's always prepared me mentally for a bite. And it's still a privilege to be able to work with a species like this or any venomous reptile, crocodile, uh, viper, no matter what it is, I love reptiles, I love wildlife, and I'll keep doing this for the rest of my life. It's not something that deters me if I get bit, it's just motivation to be safer, smarter, and to have my wits about me at all times when dealing with some of the gnarliest reptiles on the planet like cobras and crocs. I mean, how cool is this? A little monocled cobra a little gem of the world of wildlife. Venomous reptiles, they kick ass, but they're dangerous and they demand respect. Ooh, look at that beautiful monocled cobra. And you're getting big, dude. I think I'm gonna have to set you up in a, in a nice uh, enclosure pretty soon. And you can see the more I move my body, the more this snake focuses on the movement because they don't have heat seeking pits like your viper. So he's just focusing on all the different movements that I'm making with my face. And that's why he's just hooding up at me and looking at me like that. And I'm just out of strike range. But if you don't know the range with the cobra when it strikes, you can end up with a bite, right? You can end up with a bite. I'm sorry, buddy. We're gonna let him be. And we're gonna be putting him in a new enclosure pretty soon. There you go, buddy. Comment below, what should we name this baby cobra? Such a cutie. Let's go see some crocs, go see the camels, and uh, go see what Bagoy, the Eurasian eagle is doing. You guys hungry? We got the American crocodiles right here. And I've got a bucket full of shrimp. Oh boy, I want some, some yummy shrimp. Oh, oh, sorry guys. Want some shrimp? Who wants to eat from my hands? Who's gonna be nice to me though? You're not gonna eat my finger, are you? Ow, he, did, he bit my finger, but that's okay. He's a crocodile. <laughs> that's to be expected. They, 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 do, they do bite. These are all beautiful American crocs. And these guys are gonna be monsters in the future. I still don't know the sexes of these crocodiles. So we'll see in the future whether or not we got a bunch of boys or a bunch of girls. And then we're gonna assort them accordingly. Oh, a little bit of scrimp for you guys. Oh, there you go, buddy. A little bit of delicious scrimp. Run, run, he's gonna get you. Oh, they love to eat shrimp. The best diet you can give them is what they get naturally in the wild. Oh, oh, he got a little shrimp. How about shrimp for you? There you go, my boy. Hey, don't steal a shrimp. I got plenty of, I got literally like a hundred and some shrimp right here. We'll take a shrimp, hey, hey. Come on, boys, let's go for a little walk 
Oh, don't mind me. I'm just walking my two camels. <laughs> oh, don't mind me. I'm just walking my boys. Going for a little... Oh, shit. You relax now, Timmy. Don't worry. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. These camels are perfectly trained. Come on, my friends. Come on. Let's go. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Relax, Timmy. What did I talk about? You get a treat when you do this. You want to kiss? You get a treat. Mm -hmm. There you go. Come on, come here, Humphrey. Come on, Ash. And Timmy! Come on, guys. Let's go for a little trot. Let's go for a little trot. Oh, happy trot. I want to grasp that, Humphrey. Hold it tight. Love it. Home it. Me like, look, don't you wish you could touch this hump in person? Look at that. Mm. That's a solid piece of hump right there. What are you guys eating? Some ferns? Do your ferns really taste that good? I see you guys eating these a lot. They don't taste that good. I don't know why you guys like this. Camels are opportunistic grazers, so they'll actually eat any type of vegetation, cactuses, ferns, mm. grasses. Uh, leaves off a tree, basically anything. This is actually kind of dangerous because camels are so heavy and bulky that if they start bouncing around and kicking me, I might actually get hurt. So let's not uh, stand in between the danger zone. Look at these beautiful one home dromedary boys. Can you believe how big these guys are now? How crazy is that? Beautiful. What? Did you bark? We're going to the dog park. Come on, guys. Woo! We have Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. He's probably the most chill crocodile I have, so we're using him for the Scales Expo this past weekend. And when he's taped up, he's nice and safe for the kids to hold. So we had all kinds of people from around the world coming just to hang out and meet Anakin and talk about crocs up close and personal. Look at that. See his ears flapping? He was just doing it a second ago. He's got these cute little ears right behind the eyes, and they actually open up when he's ready to listen. But when he goes underneath the water, he seals his ears up so he doesn't get water in those ear canals. How cool is that? A saltwater crocodile that's so chill that kids can hug him and get a cool photo with him. So if you guys ever book a tour on chandlerswildlife.com, you can actually hang out with this saltwater crocodile, pet him, feel him, get a photo with him, and also feed crocodiles over the fence, see the world's deadliest snakes up close, and all kinds of cool wildlife here at Chandler's Wild World. So book a tour. We're back to doing tours, so check it out on chandlerswildlife.com. And I just want to show you Anakin because I love him so much. Favorite animal on the planet, the saltwater crocodile. Steve Irwin put me on these guys when I was a kid and I just love them. Look how badass he is. And he's a golden crocodile too. So right now he doesn't look too pretty, but he's a beautiful crocodile. And he's got lots of teeth. You wouldn't want to get bit by a saltwater croc. When they're full grown, they have over 5,000 pounds per scrunch pressure in the jaws. That's a gnarly animal. They feed on other crocs. They feed on people, they feed on sharks and sea turtles. Anything that fits in the jaws of a crocodile is a potential meal for a croc. If it doesn't fit, they'll rip pieces off of it after it rots in the lake or canal for a little bit. There you go, buddy. And for today, we're gonna give him a whole bunch of shrimp jambalaya, baby, from the bait shop because we love him. And he loves to eat his shrimp. These guys are found in the oceans and brackish water canals, river systems. So fresh and salt water, hence the name saltwater crocodile. Doesn't mean he's restricted to salt water, it just means he can live in the ocean full time due to these salt glands that he has to excrete salt out of his body. Only two crocodiles on the planet have those glands, American crocodiles and saltwater crocodiles. So we're gonna see Ziggy right now, my American crocodile. Ooh, beautiful American crocodile. Ziggy, my first ever crocodile that I got off my license. And I love her to bits and pieces. Let's see if we can get her to come up a little bit. She's being a little bit shy. Last time I fed her some shrimp, I had to catch her out of her enclosure. So we're just gonna put a bunch of shrimp in here. Let her feast as much as she wants. Beautiful croc. And I think my friend is actually dropping off a gift right now. So let's feed Ziggy some more shrimp. And I'll see you guys in a split. Ryan just came and surprised me. He brought me this beautiful death adder. Check this thing out. What's going on guys? So Chandler, check this. This is a Dahara death adder. These guys are absolutely gorgeous. At this size, he's eating pinky mice, or she, I should say. And as they get older, they get about 30 to 34 inches uh, for like a big one, and they keep this coloration too, and they actually even just get better looking with age. Look oh, yeah, at that, that's so crazy. Look how Yeah, and they'll puff out. out. That is so cool. So this is the world's fastest striking snake, and these guys are in the top eight most venomous on the planet. This snake literally could put you in a coffin. So these are pretty toxic. And the funny thing is, so most people looking at this just based off body size and like type, they think it's a viper. But actually this is an elapid because these guys are native to uh, Indonesia and Australia. And as you know, Australia, they don't have any vipers. It's all, all uh, elapids over there. So Such a bad this is a, the fattest elapid in the world, basically. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, let's let's close the world's fastest striking snake and check out the other one. I didn't, I really did not expect this. You guys know I used to have a Gabino, a Gaboon Viper hybrid with a Rhino Viper. His name was Childish Gambino. 
and I gave them as a gift to Tyler Nolan, and he passed away, sadly. Uh, luckily, Tyler Nolan was able to get more Gabinos, and Ryan just surprised me and brought me a baby Gabino. So this is actually a U.S. captive-born and bred Gabino. Uh, it is a Congo Rhino bred to a West African uh, Gaboon. Now, this is a little girl. So I've had her for about two months now. She's eating great, and as you can see, she's absolutely stunning. So she's going to do well for you, and they've been super chill since I've had them. Dude, look at the pattern on this snake. Are you guys able to see how beautiful the snake actually is? That's so wild. And they got that typical rhino viper arrow on the head. And so the horns are gonna be crazy, huh? Super crazy, because the Congo rhino and the West African gaboon both have huge horns. So this thing's gonna be massive. Massive things. You would not want to get hit by this type of snake. The gaboon vipers have cardiotoxins. So this guy probably carries that too, and that'll shut down your heart and also make you bleed out of every orifice until you're yeah. dead. Not a fun bite. And you see her tiny little tail. So these guys, they're actually really easy to tell the difference between a male and a female because the females have tiny little tails and the males are actually like four times as long. Dude, thank you so much. You're welcome, brother. I've been wanting to get a Gabino, but you guys know I'm doing so many projects, it's hard for me to just, you know, buy new snakes and whatnot. This is an epic gift. That's insane. We're going to put this little Gabino right here in this locked top reptile tank. So you guys can see her on the tours here at CWW. And thank you so much, Ryan. Secure. Nice. Little Gabino. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I was trying to, trying to hold me. What are you doing? Why are you trying to wrestle me? Why are you trying to wrestle me? Let me hold you. Why are you thinking about it? What do you think about it? We love each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reverse. Dislocate my bones. Up, up. Ooh, hoo, hoo. My sweet, beautiful Eurasian eagle owl. But goy, you are such a handsome bird. He's just enjoying his new enclosure. Enjoying his new enclosure and enjoying all these delicious treats hidden inside that baby chicken. Don't worry, we only use frozen thawed. You mainly put down chickens. Don't you just love your chicken? I mean, who doesn't love Chick fil A? But goy. Second largest owl on the planet, the Eurasian eagle owl. And he's a boy, whereas he only gets half the size of a female. A female can have a six and a half foot plus wingspan and can weigh seven to eight pounds, feeding on red foxes, feral cats, other species of owl, hawks, and uh, other types of birds, weasels, rats, mice, rabbits. It's just so crazy. If you're not, if you're unlucky and walking your chihuahua potentially in somewhere like Europe, or uh, Asia, you could potentially lose your chihuahua to a Eurasian eagle owl. These guys are found at the top of Africa, throughout Europe and Asia, hence the name Eurasian eagle owl. And they are probably one of the most beautiful owls or beautiful birds of prey out there in the world of wildlife. Look at those eyes. They are an iconic bird with beautiful orange eyes and they have what's called crepuscular vision. So these light colored eyes allow the animals to hunt during the day and at night, where something like a barn owl of old black doll's eyes would only be hunting at night because those old black eyes help with nocturnal hunting. So this guy is perfectly capable at hunting any time of the day and he doesn't give a rip. He's always ready for the hunt. He's always ready. He's always, oh, 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 we're gonna bump beaks, bump beaks, bro. Oh, oh, oh you give me a little, little piercing? I got a little, got a little yolk on my nose. Thank you very much. I love you so much, big boy. Mm, mm, mm. All right, beautiful people. That's going to be it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Get it? I will see you on the next one. I'm pretty funny. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay safe. Follow your dreams. Stay passionate about what you guys love. Big boy, fly back to your perch. Beautiful bird of prey. And now it's time for me to fly away. You're not gonna eat my finger, are you? Ow, he bit my finger.